my own father is sabotaging me. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my uh, channel. For today's video, I know a lot of you are excited for it. I'm gonna be reviewing and doing a tutorial with each of the Huda Beauty Haze Obsessions palettes. So if you wanna see my thoughts on these and see me put them into action, then just keep watching. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. Basically, I just like to know anything and everything about all of the new makeup launches on the market and let you guys know what is up. So recently, Miss Huda expanded her little mini palette line with three new babies. I look forward to Huda's palette launches just because I feel like she always curates some of the most thought out and versatile palettes, especially with the mini ones. I just feel like they are so accessible to people. They're at a better price and um, it's just a little bit more appealing as opposed to her larger palettes, which it's a lot more to be paid at once. Her last launch of these little guys was the Pastel Obsessions. That one kind of failed. I personally never tried it, but when they came out, I was never interested in them. And then when I saw the reviews start coming out and a lot of people just weren't happy with them, I was very happy with my choice not to pick them up. But the launch before that was actually her nude obsessions and these went over very well. I felt like the quality of them was very good and this launch gave me similar feelings to how I felt when the nude collection came out. I just kind of could tell they were gonna be good and if they weren't good at least they were really pretty. So yes I did pick up all three. So let me go over the facts about these guys. They are $29 each. They say exclusive but not limited edition on Sephora's website. I think they're gonna see how they sell and they'll decide later what they want to do with these. What is really neat online is they describe these as a softer side to the smoky eye. These three gorgeous colorways suit every skin tone. All of which I agree with. I think you actually can get a smoky eye with these palettes, but not your typical smoky eye. They say it creates a more modern edit of the smoky eye, which I totally get. I totally believe it. You have options for depth, but it creates it in a different way that's not like a black smoky eye. So I love the way they describe these. I feel like it's very true. And even down to the claim of they suit every skin tone. Honestly, there's a lot of variety and depth in each of these palettes. I really do feel like these will complement a very large skin tone range. Also something to know, all of her 9 pan palettes, they are made in China as opposed to her bigger ones, which she usually sources from Italy. Yep, Italy. Sometimes when you see that happen where a company will source from Italy or USA, and then you'll see like their smaller palettes or their holiday palettes, limited edition palettes, sometimes they will source them from China and Too Faced is the perfect example. You can tell a difference by where it's made. When they make it in China, it tends to be of lesser quality. Today with these palettes, I really I really do feel like the quality of these are not compromised at all and because they are made in China they're a little bit more affordable for you guys which I think is awesome. So the packaging of these they seem to have followed suit of their recent launches. These are no longer cardboard like they were in their original launch. They're this very nice plastic components and then you get a big mirror and they have a clasp closing and they just feel very sturdy very great for travel. I love these palettes for travel because I feel like they pack in a lot of colors a lot of variety in these little sturdy components. The design of all of these, they have the word haze, that is haze, and then they'll have the color. Really simple, very sleek looking. My favorite to this day is still the nude. I just love the kind of animal print that they have on here. It's really stunning. But no, these are still really nice, and like I said, I had a very good feeling about these. So I'm gonna quickly go over each of the palettes for you guys, show you the swatches, tell you my thoughts, and then I will get into the tutorials that I did, because I did do a look with each one of these. So we'll start off with the Sand Haze. The Sand Haze to me definitely is probably the most dupable within the whole Huda Beauty line. I just don't feel like it's very original to her line, but it is stunning. So this one you're getting five mattes and four of her shimmers. I think that within her shimmers there are two different formulas in this particular launch. There's more of a true shimmer and then there's also more of a kind of lid topper finish or if you're familiar with the Mercury retrograde there's a couple of shadows that are like lid toppers they have like this crystalline kind of finish so I would say in here you get two true shimmers and then two crystally kind of shades a really great variety I really love the tones in here I love how these are 
kind of almost more purpley cranberry. I would say pretty original shades here. I don't see these kinds of colors a lot. I think this one is going to be a lot of your guys' favorites because it is the most wearable in the line, but it also is a little bit more pinky, I would say it leans. Those are very popular tones. I do think it pulls a lot more pink than it looks. For this, I can't really pinpoint a true color story, like sand is what they say it as, but you have gold, you have pinks, you have cranberries, you have warm browns, peaches. There's a lot of different tones going on in here, which I think is really exciting because you can get a lot of different looks with this palette. There's a lot of different depths and transitions and creams. I would have liked to have seen a more mid-tone transition because both of these are pretty darkish, but that is what this one is looking like. Really beautiful. Let's take a look at Khaki, which will be the second tutorial that you'll see. This one I think is what most people were excited about. It's probably the most different, and I will say, looking at all of the Huda palettes I have pulled out, this one is the most most original in their line. So if you do have all of the Huda palettes and you're not looking for a lot of dupes or repeats, this one is the way to go. This one I think might be the most gorgeous palette in this launch. There are just so many beautiful fall tones in here. So you have five mattes in here as well. And then I say you have four of the crystal kind of formula in here. There isn't a true shimmer, which is fine. The, like this crystal shade is a little bit more lid toppery, whereas I feel like the rest of them actually Actually have more of a pigmented base. Nonetheless, they are all gorgeous on the eyelid. I was very impressed with these. I felt like all of the matte shades blended beautifully, and I just think she covers every base with her palettes. She curates, in my opinion, like some of the best, most well thought out palettes. You can get a really green look with this, just as you think when you're opening a khaki palette, you can get that khaki look, but you can go in other directions with this palette as well. You have a copper shade, you have some gold, some more pinky tones, you can play a little bit more with the browns. So it's it's not just centered around one color, which I really like. You get complementary colors to the khaki tones. So that one is khaki. Um, and finally, we're gonna take a look at purple. Obviously, this is the one that I'm wearing right now. If you're new to my channel, I definitely am more partial to purple palettes, which also makes me a tougher critic. But purple is kind of the one color that I can wear that's not neutral, that I feel comfortable with. So in here, I'd say you're getting four mattes, two shimmers, which are gonna be these two, and then three three of the crystal lid topper shade. What I really like about this is it still is a very purple palette. You can tell like this does deserve the name Purple Haze, but you also have these pops of cranberry in here, which I think is very complementary to purple. And then you do have more neutral like brown shades as well to kind of mix in and neutralize the look a little bit. But you still have these two shades right here, which I used in today's video, which still really complete a true purple look. And you will see in my tutorial that I am very impressed with especially how the deepest shade blended out and I think you can just get a lot of different dimension in this palette and you can go a lot of different directions. I mean without repeating myself too many times I really am impressed with these palettes. As always you can get a lot of different looks with a single nine pan palette which I think a lot of brands fail to do. That being said the downside of that because you do get like a crease shade, a transition shade, a skin tone shade, a deepening shade, a couple different shades of shimmers especially you know with the cream cream tones, they repeat throughout her collection in every single palette you have those. So because of that, there are a lot of dupes within her other palettes, but also those are the colors that you use the most. And because you have all of the variety in a single palette, that is what gives you the ability to travel. So it just kind of depends on your preferences because I know, do know and understand some of you guys, you know, you don't want to have a lot of the same shades. And taking a look at all of the palettes that I have in front of me, I chose the ones that I thought you guys would be most interested in me comparing and I'm not gonna do arm swatches because you know all of the cream shades that all of these palettes have are gonna look the same all of the mid-tone peach shades that all of these palettes has are gonna look the same like I said I think sand is the most unoriginal as far as what's already in her line I think it's the perfect mix of the nude light and the nude medium like this is the in-between palette so this is the light medium <laughs> palette it also has a lot of similarities to the new nude from Huda Beauty as well. I would argue that every single matte in here is also in the new nude. I would say one or two very similar 
shimmers in the new nude as well. So this one's definitely the most unoriginal, uh, but it also might be the one that you guys will wear the most. Like I said, the khaki, definitely the most unique. Taking a look, I don't see any of these green tone shades in here. So maybe with this shade, this shade, and this shade, the colors that you will use the most in the palette anyways, yeah, similarities, but this one's different. And then the purple one, I do feel like uh, obviously with Mercury Retrograde, you have a lot of purple options in here as well. I don't see any exact dupes kind of looking at the two, but I do think that these are very complementary to each other. So while they aren't the exact same shades, if you put these nine shades in this palette, it would look like an even better complete palette as far as the purple goes. And yeah, and also with the new nude, there are a couple of similarities. So especially with the purple haze and the sand haze, if you have the new nude and the mercury retrograde as far as color families go, you definitely have a lot of similar or close to duping kind of shades, especially when it comes to the matte shades. The matte shades especially aren't the most original, but she put those matte shades in there because that is what you use to lay down the foundation of the look. Mattes are essential and the shades that she chose, I think they just make sense, but because of that, you probably already have them. As far as quality goes, I find the quality on these to be superb. They aren't overly pigmented, which I think makes them easier to work with. I love all of the dimensions that you get, and every single shade that I tried in these palettes today did not give me a dud. So I think these are very well worth the money, and they are gorgeous. I am going to transition you over to my three tutorials, and then I'll be back to give you my final thoughts. Okay, so for this eye, we are going to use the Sand Haze one. And my dad is mowing the lawn right when I start. Are we really surprised? We're gonna start off with the shade in the middle. I'm using a Wingoss number four brush and this is a really nice peachy pink transition shade. With the same brush, I'm going into this shade right here. Obviously, I'm creating a gradient and I'm blending this shade on the lid as well. Just a little bit. I'm not really packing it on the lid. I did put light layer of the powder on my lid and that blended out really beautifully. With a refer number 14 brush, we're going to take the deepest shade. And I'm going to lightly tap this in the very outer corner, like so, just to create that depth. And this has some very nice pigmentation. And from what I can tell, I'm really liking how it's blending also. I'm wiping off my Refer 14 brush and I'm gonna start to build that same gradient on my lower lash line. So starting off, with the peach shade, and now we're going into the middle shade, and that's gonna focus on the outer half, my lower lash line. And then we're gonna go into the deepest shade and really focus that out here in the outer corner. All of the mattes in here are blending beautifully. I'm going into this shade right here. I'm not even really sure how to describe it, but I'm using a Wayne Goss number seven brush. I'm going to apply this to the outer half of my lid. And this is a beautiful mid-tone shimmer shade. And it's applying very nice dry. I genuinely do not know how to describe this color other than it's like a mid-tone pink, but it's like super pretty. I did get a little bit of fallout with that shade, but that's okay. I wiped off my brush and now we're going into this shade and this is going to be the inner half. And this is kind of one of those special lid toppery kind of shades, but it actually has pigment. So you don't necessarily need to have anything underneath, but it gives that really pretty soft sparkle. I really like this palette. Since this shade is also the lightest shade, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of it more into the inner corner. And I do kind of want to redefine my outer corner. So I am taking the darkest matte shade that I used. I'm putting this out here. Ooh, really gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna do liner and lashes and then I'll show you how the final look looks like with the sand, but when I'm back, this eye will be done too, so just be prepared. So with liner and lashes, here is the sand look. This is definitely the more wearable, if you ask me, of the three as far as everyday pinky tones. So if you like the pinky tones, I think you will really like this one. Okay, so on this eye, we are gonna play with the khaki haze, and this looks so perfect for fall, you guys. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here as my transition shade, and I'm going to blend this 
this with my Wayne Goss number four brush and I'm just basically applying and blending it out everywhere. Next we're going in with this really deep khaki shade. This is a rougher number 14 brush. These shadows didn't swatch the best so it's very important to see how these work. And from what I can tell so far it's looking pretty good. I'm applying it to the inner and outer corner. I'm gonna go for a kind of halo kind of eye. While I'm at it, I'm taking the same exact shade and I'm going to work this on the lower lash line. I am getting a lot of powder flying away, but it's not too powdery of a formula. It's not a hot mess, which I appreciate personally. But this applied really nice and very smooth. I'm going to work on applying just a touch of depth with this deepest shade and literally just kind of patting it. Wow, I just love the tones in this palette in particular. I'm gonna take a little bit of that deepest shade and run it along the outer part of my lower lash line. With the Wayne Goss number seven brush, we're going into this shade right here. And I'm finding with this formula, I'm getting quite a lot of fallout on my cheek. So I don't know what that's all about, but how stunning. I'm also gonna take the tip of my brush and just put it along the inner half of my lower lash line just for some added dimension down here. Gorgeous. With a rougher number three brush, we're going into the lightest shade right here. Beautiful, oh my, I love it. I'm actually gonna also take a touch of that. Lightly put it right in the center because I noticed this has a lot of gorgeous reflect. So I want my eyes to really be dazzled a little bit more. Now the colors that I used, they were all beautiful. They look absolutely stunning on the eye. I will say this shade, I'm not too sure about. This one is kind of a a true lid topper like I don't get too much from it other than that sparkly reflect so just be aware of that that's kind of a dud I wouldn't necessarily call it a dud I think if you have glitter glue underneath it will be a great shade I also think inner corner or just a touch of glimmer it's gonna be beautiful but on its own just beware you might be disappointed by that so I'm gonna finish liner and lashes and you'll see the final look here is the final look with the khaki palette I am absolutely in love with this palette if you like greens especially for fall whoo I'm obsessed with this look I think it is stunning I really really love this look and this palette all right so the last one that we have is the purple haze now if you are new to my channel purple is my playground so this is my kind of color story I feel very comfortable with purples so I am a little bit biased <laughs> with my Wayne Goss number four we're going in with this mauve shade uh, this is like a very dusty lilac shade this shade does have a little bit more kickback than a lot of the other matte shades as expected with these lighter shades that's just something that happens I'm gonna go into this middle shade I'm gonna use this to set underneath the brow. I haven't been doing this with the other palettes, but I do appreciate that each of the palettes have like a nice peachy skin tone shade that you can use to help blend out the edges of a look or to set underneath your brow. For me, I feel like applying that peachy shade helps blend the transition and then it also kind of sets underneath the brow. With my Refer 14 brush, I'm just going straight into this deep purple shade. And for a lot of brands, this is a very, very difficult color. I will say from this shade, I am using a light hand, but I don't get a ton of pigmentation right off the bat But I like that because the shade does build and because you're not getting so much Pigmentation off the bat. It's actually a lot easier to blend out So I really appreciate that and it's not like the color doesn't show up as you can see it's building up beautifully I'm gonna run that along the lower lash line and then I'm just gonna take the same brush and we're gonna build this deep purple shade all over my lid. So if I had maybe like a flat shader brush, this would be quicker, but I really like how the blending brush diffuses it a little bit. And I mean, you can see how beautifully that shadow blended. So the quality here, I mean, I'm very, very impressed. We're gonna take this shade right here. So this is a different formula than a lot of the shades that you're seeing with this line. So the really shiny, pretty sparkly shadows, I'm gonna refer to those as kind of like lid toppers, even though they don't need to be toppers, but they do have that extra glittery finish. This one is more of a shimmer. It feels different. It doesn't have those glitter crystal particles in it, but it's just a really, gorgeous shimmer, which I really like that there is that variation in there. Super stunning. To add a little bit more dimension to the lid, I'm taking my shader brush and we're going into this shade right here. So this is a complete different formula than the shimmer shade I just put down and I'm just doing a light wash of it all over the lid, not pressing too hard, 
just to add, like I said, extra dimension to the lid because it has a gorgeous sparkle to it and it adds a little bit more light to the eye. With this formula though, you will get fallout. There's also another like true shimmer shade, which is right here. And this is like a purpley red. I love a little bit of like cranberry matched up with purple. I think it's really flattering. So I'm gonna take this on a pencil brush and just to kind of spice up the look a little bit, I put this along the lower lash line. And this shade also has a lid topper shade that corresponds with it beautifully, but we're just gonna use a shimmer version of it. I did did decide to take this shade also and use this as my inner corner color. Now this actually has a shadow so on my skin tone it casts a little bit deep. That is a little bit unflattering because you want it to brighten the eye not deepen the eye. So I did end up taking a little bit of my Persona Kali Glow Highlighter which is the highlighter on my face just to brighten that up and take that deep shadow away. But that's the look and <laughs> I really love it. So I'm gonna do liner lashes and I'll show you the complete look. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed my tutorials on these. Overall, if you couldn't tell, I really had a positive experience with these palettes and I think she redeemed herself from the pastels because these are very, very nice. I think a lot of you will like them. As far as my favorite, I'm definitely caught up between these two. I think the khaki and the purple are both amazing. As far as what I will use more, I will use the purple more because I love purple. It's my favorite eyeshadow color and I think it's a very well-rounded, well thought out palette. The khaki though, I think as far as originality would end up being my favorite because I mean, I do have dupes of these colors in my collection, but this one makes me happy because it's more fall toned. So for fall, this would rank number one, but me just thinking about what I would use more, I will end up using the purple, but these two are definitely very, very close. And I do like the sand. It's just the color story doesn't excite me as much. And I can definitely see most of you guys who like more neutral colors, this one will probably be your favorite. But to me, I've seen it too many times before within her own line. So that's why this is number three, but the quality is still there. If you like this color story, I do recommend it. So it all comes down to what your color preferences are and what you will wear the most. These definitely get a thumbs up from me. They are really good. So <laughs> that is is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.